the time now. It's been billed as the long-awaited inspirational guide to life for a generation of black British women. Written by two friends, Stay in Your Own Lane explores what it means to be young, black and female in the UK. It covers everything from education to work and dating. Did I to say the authors, uh, Yomi Adagoke and Elizabeth Yubi Benene, both with us this morning. Uh, very good morning to you both, Hi. Elizabeth. Now, the, everyone needs a bit of advice from time to time. That's just one of these things. Could come from anywhere. Couldn't it come, come from family members? Could come from friends? What, what was the thing that you thought at some point was missing? In, what, in terms of what you had heard. Yeah. So I was reading a lot of like self-help, personal development guidebooks. Um, I read Sheryl Sandberg, Lean In, and, which was great. Um, but I was had my first job, my first graduate job, and I really wanted to kind of get ahead in the workplace. And um, I read that those books and they were great, but they were missing talking about the black female British experience and what, what it is to be in the workplace in modern Britain. Um, so I called Yomi, my best friend, and I said, can you write a book that speaks to me as a young black British woman? And she goes, we should do it together. So right. So you set off on this extraordinary journey and have spoke, spoken to lots of um, women along the way. And um, what do you think are the key problems, I suppose, that is the question, isn't it? Well, it's a broad one because they're just, not just all sound victimising, but um, there are so many just mm. in terms of, um, in the workplace, I suppose with books like Lean In, they sort of encourage you very much to be forthright, to sort of, you know, really put yourself out there. When you're a black woman, doing the exact same thing can be read differently, can be read as aggression. There's obviously the angry black woman trope. And then um, when we were sort of researching the book, we realised that there, there were issues that sort of lived outside of the workplace, things like dating. Um, black women are more likely to be sort of swiped right on dating apps to not receive messages back. And then you've got health. Black women are three times more likely to die of breast cancer. So when we say, you know, the problems are very bespoke and different mm -hmm. and wide ranging, that felt so important to us to make sure that we sort of covered everything. Explain the title to me. It's called Slay in Your Lane. Yeah. Okay. So I sent a picture of your a picture of Solange Knowles to Yomi, as you do randomly, um, and I captioned it Slay in Your Lane. Mm -hmm. um, there was no connotation to the book um, at all. Um, and she came back to me and she said, that's the name of the book. That's what we're going to call it. And the name kind of came from me looking at that picture. And um, Solange and Knowles, obviously, Beyonce's older sister, younger sister. Yeah. And being, obviously, in the shadow of Beyonce is not easy. So in that picture, she would come into her own. She looked amazing. Her music was sounding great. And I just felt that she came into her own as a woman. And it just felt really, like, um, I just felt really good for her. I felt really, like, encouraged that she had finally found her voice. And it explains me, because I didn't understand before I read it in the book, what slay in your, ne in your own name means. I guess it means to flourish despite perceived and obviously real, ex uh, sorry, to flourish despite limitations and just to sort of live and be your own sort of, to sort of have your own version of success. Right. To so flourish and be yourself. And, you know, um, despite the limitations that society does set on black women, saying that, you know, you can only do this, you can only do that, being sure that you decide what you can do and doing it as best as you can to your own ability. Yeah. Have you felt personally, because presumably you, everyone has different experiences yeah. personally, you share a lot of common things. Do, do you have differences in how you approach this subject as well as common ground? Oh, between, yeah, between yeah. Us. yeah, because you're, you're very old friends, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. eight but years. But presumably between you, there will be differences of, of how things have affected you over the years. Yeah, because obviously we've both grown up in South London um, and both Nigerian parents. So when we first met, we had a lot of diff we had a lot of common commonality, but um, we did we are so different. Yeah. Um, we spend a lot of time together, but even how we we, in, we have we deal with microaggressions and do we deal with the various things? We are very different personalities, and, we, and that helps us kind of get common ground in terms of helping each other. Now, you mm. spoke to a lot, lot of people during the process, didn't yeah. you? And a lot of very inspirational uh, people, women, and from different generations. I'm just curious, you're, you don't mind me saying, you're 26 no years old, that's yeah. not a problem, is it? <laughs> so, um, did you notice very different themes coming from people from different er different ages, life yeah. experiences? I think that's what was so interesting. There were so many differences. I mean, our, old, our oldest um, interviewee is 73, Margaret Busby, who was the first black female publisher in the country. And our youngest is Florence Adepoju, who's 27. So she's just a year older than us. But what was so surprising was just how much of the same stuff was happening. So of course there were lots of differences. Margaret's treatment and what she was going through, um, you know, several years ago was obviously quite different, a lot harsher. Um, racism was a lot more flagrant. But in terms of, you know, stereotyping, in terms of, um, you know, ambition, and, and how you're sort of pigeonholed. Those themes were coming up regardless if women were 50, whether they were 70, whether they were 40, whether they were 30. It just was something that was literally all um, running. You mentioned, and I read a whole, I had read the chapter you were talking particularly about it, um, uh, was uh, microaggressions. 
and these come in all sorts of forms. Let's give an example to give us a kind of what forms and how you deal with that. Um, so they can come through um, someone asking you exactly, exactly where you're from, so where are you really from, after you tell them, oh, I'm from England, I'm from Bright Britain. Croydon. <laughs> <Croydon. laughs> yeah. um, they can come from um, touching your hair without you asking, or without them asking you, um, or just, it's, it's but yeah, they're, they're very wide ranging, and they, they, they can, they're, they happen very like on a micro level, so you don't necessarily kind of pick up on them until like you're later mm. sitting by your desk at work, or you're like, oh gosh, that was a bit awkward, mm. and you're trying to wonder like why it was, and they don't necessarily mean that the person's a, a bad person, yeah. but they're just really awkward. I like the way um, that you describe about how you you deal with them. You know, sometimes sometimes in different ways depending Absolutely. on the circumstances, depending on who says it. Yeah. yeah. Not all, not all situations are the same. There's obviously a difference between somebody hurling racial abuse at you in the street and somebody sort of saying, well, where do you really come from out of curiosity? But that's why we sort of, from the advice of the women, it was actually their advice. Um, Dawn Butler MP, who's one of our interviewees, and Dr. Maggie Adam Pocock, a space scientist, they were the women who sort of told us, you know, not every battle is the same. Pick yeah. your battles wisely and make sure you don't come up worse from yeah, it. Yeah, Maggie's a friend of the program. She's brilliant. She's one of those people whose enthusiasm is, is so effective. So, yeah. Yeah. Just, um, and can I just say, presumably, I mean, your, your book's getting quite a lot of publicity now. Are you starting to become someone to whom people send emails saying, what should I do? You know, I know you say it's not a self-help guide, your book, but I mean, once you put yourself up in that role, some, I'm, I'm starting to think maybe you'll be getting letters saying, you know, solve my problem. Oh, we've had tweets and yeah, come up so to us. We, had, we were uh, signing yesterday and all these girls were coming up to us and asking us questions and obviously we just want to like help them as much <laughs> as possible. responsibility, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm also into this as well because um, there's so much res that resonates with it. Um, you know, because by, by the title, you, who do you think should be reading this book? everyone and that's something we continually said and it sounds very cliche but um we do genuinely want every person to read it obviously it's called the black girl bible but yeah. um i and most black women in this country have spent years reading outside of our own experiences one of my favorite books growing up was harry potter i'm not a white male wizard we all <laughs> we just want everybody to read and learn from it yeah. essentially it's great to talk to you thank, thank you so, you so much, much. Thank you. it's called uh, slay in your lane the black girl bible thank you thank so much. much time now